Yo, yo, this is Tommy Noble. Make sure you check me out on the stage near you. When I want to get the buzz behind the buzz, I listen to Dryer Buzz and News on Talk Radio 1380 WAOK, baby. Odds are, most of us don't come from well-connected families or generations of college-educated professionals. Odds are, if we do graduate college and then go to graduate school, we don't end up in the innovation business for lots of reasons, but most people don't. Most people don't. Call us at 404-892-2703 on News and Talk 1380, WAOK. All right, and that is a clip from Platform 2014. And here's the thing, if you if you want to be in business, you got to put yourself in the right place. And I think that's probably the first investment that you can make is educating yourself. I used to have, when I started out, I, I gave myself five principles, and one was to um, define where I wanted to be in this universe, and next was to educate and elevate myself accordingly, learn everything I needed to learn in order to do, like back in the day, okay, the Internet was blowing up. I had to learn how to do websites. I had to go into all that coding and everything, you know, and uh, blogging. People call me the veteran blogger because my first blog went out via fax. <laughs> I used to. I was one of those people. If you if you gave me a car with a fax number on it, I was in heaven because that fax? meant I was go, I was faxing you on Friday. I'm one of those. You know, how I used to go to the fax machine and you had all these excess faxes. Like, where'd that come from? That's where you, my blog was one of those. And, and I would hook up hook up the receptionist oh, so she would go and you. make co- yeah okay. she go and make fifty copies and put them in the ladies' restroom and she put them in the break room and oh, you know right. and then when the internet came along and I was like hey let's just put it all in it that's innovation yeah you. you when you love it and you know that it's what you're supposed to do, you stay in it any way you Amen. can. Yes. And so that's that's why I'm still here uh, developing the app now. I'm really excited about that. So awesome. you guys got to check out the app. But go to Dryer Buzz. Just like Tommy Nova just said, he wants to get the buzz behind the buzz. He goes to dryerbuzz.com. And you can find out um, what's on the coming up on the shows. You can also listen to some of the archives of the shows. Now, ladies, in this segment, we want to talk about being black businesses because uh, it's W-A-O-K, and, and, and a lot of people feel like maybe we've got some, one, we we have a different flavor mm-hmm. in doing business. We find a way and we make one, for one. Like you were saying that you guys, in having to move from little five points to Midtown, you were just saying, we're, gonna, we're moving to Midtown, but you hadn't really... We didn't have a space yet. We right. were just we were speaking it you into were existence. You were speaking it into into existence. And you know, believe it or not, when we started looking at places, mm-hmm. and this is it's really sad, but we started looking at places and we were going to different people, you know, like the brokers and stuff, and we were giving them and people were nixing us off the back. They were like Jamaican restaurant not happening in Midtown. You know what I mean? They were just like telling us we couldn't do it. You know, mm-hmm. and you guys are celebrating an anniversary. Is that coming up, we, or you just had? We celebrated our first year anniversary in the space awesome. already, and go. I can't believe it. So yeah, you know, being that, you know, it's it's a big deal, and you're hold to a different standard. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And a different expectation. People have different expectations when they know it's a black owned business. So when mm-hmm. you're walking in, our people right. even hold you to a different expectation. That's a, a question that people ask too, because I know even from an author, being an author's perspective, it's like people want to know, mm-hmm. well, being a black woman writer do you put your face on your book um how do people know coming into strip because there's the line where you want to celebrate the fact that you are a successful black business but do you tell people that you know how do you let people know how do they know coming into your establishment that is a black owned establishment well because we're so family oriented we have pictures all over the wall Mm -hmm. you know people who've read about us they've read the bio so they know me and my husband right um you know so for the most part they always and then it's jamaican restaurants so even though we have you know all types of different cultures in jamaica they they already know once it's a jamaican they know or they assume you know it's a black owned business and you want people to celebrate that yes and they should celebrate it you know and i understand you know there's a lot of things we I've had people come to me like oh we, you know I want to support our businesses but you guys did this you know and I just feel like you know sometimes you have to understand we're still at the at the at the beginning stages mm-hmm. of what we're doing so you can't compare us to a red lobster and all but guess what that's corporate money mm-hmm. doing corporate things with corporate <laughs> finances exactly. who also at mm-hmm. one point if they were ever starting at a mom and pop mm-hmm. you weren't there to discover mm-hmm. and go through the heartaches and pains that they were in you weren't there so you don't know they probably went through some of the same things right yeah we run out of stuff sometimes and we we, yeah, hear, we hear that we hear their argument all the time yeah. of people how people walk away from that experience should they if if something is not right should they 
let you know. Please. I believe that you should definitely, if you really want to support, mm -hmm. you know what I mean, then you really have to let someone know it. Yelping, you know, we have people that go yelp. Just come tell us. It says that on our menu. How do you feel about Yelp Tell yep, us yep, to reviews, fix it. The online, you know? How do you feel about the online reviews? Well, um, you know, for <laughs> the most part, the majority of them are positive. Good. Right. But, but Yelp, also Yelp has recent, also been extorted. Recently, yeah. yeah, recently in trouble. I think the uh, F whatever. <laughs> um, they've been... Um, Telling people that they have to pay for a certain service, and then they'll actually take off your negatives yeah. and just push your oh, positive. Oh, yeah, and, they, and okay. they'll jumble them around. And so you have to then go call Yelp and say, okay, well, how can I be down? And that's not fair. That's you not know what fair. I mean? If, you're going, right. if this is unbiased and you're allowing people to come in and talk about their experience, I think they should, like, just step away from it. It's not right. fair. And you get more people. We have a massive positive, you know, people mm -hmm. coming in, and they're like, this is the best experience I've ever had. But, but those people yelp. aren't going up there and yelping. So it's always people who have a negative or what they consider negative. Right. They're going to be the first ones that are going to go up there and start writing. I mean, I've had people have long haul paragraphs and I've had to answer them back and you get know, a the life. Whole thing. I, that's what I would say. <laughs> right. Get an entire life. Right. Right. <laughs> now, 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 there's a lot of reality going on in, in how, how do you do business with, we see it because when you do a reality show, that's going to be there forever and ever mm -hmm. and ever. So tell us, I mean, how do you marry that into what you're doing and then the tapings going on and people trying to come in for the dining experience because one of the things people will say about Atlanta businesses um, they you try to go to a restaurant they got a private event or you try to go mm -hmm. you know because there's a whole there's a whole Atlanta we don't do that other flavor. we keep okay. our doors open you know mm -hmm. startup such a beautiful place mm -hmm. and it's so welcoming that a lot of people want to tape there I mean the great thing about Atlanta right now we have this bustling film industry um, and for a restaurant like startup yeah come on in we don't just do it matter of fact don't call me for no trade or for free. We charge everybody. I don't care who you are, House of Atlanta. I don't care. You come in and pay. I was gonna. I was gonna ask because you know Atlanta has this thing. Well, we can give you great exposure. I don't need it. We've, We've been in every exposure. magazine. Right. We've been on every. We television need the show. money. And I so, need you to pay. And come so they on. come in, and then our guests, our guests, our guests are kind of fascinated by it all. They're excited Cause, cause to come you in. Come, and see. I'm coming in because I I want to eat some. What did you call it? Soft, sawfish. Um, the codfish. Sawfish fritters. fritters. Yes. And you're saying, okay, wait. I I need you to sign a waiver because you know the reality the housewives gonna be at the table next to you yeah. how do people handle that people some love people it. love it you know mm -hmm. some people love it but we always try to keep a section to where they don't have to be involved okay you know and they can sit over there because we definitely don't want to turn away you know our customers just right. because there's something we've never going closed on. our doors and said no we're closed for taping we'll okay. we'll try and make sure that it's on a date but hey, man people come in there they're eating great food they're getting a free show right yeah. and a question i'm sure everybody has that question how did you get hooked up with all these reality shows in your business you know what i really don't Word no, it was just word of mouth. We just started. Ha we were on somebody's list, and a lot of a lot of movers is. and shakers come to start up. Yeah. People hear about it. We're number one in Atlanta, so people come. And they're like, "Wow, it's beautiful here. You have great people serving. Right. Um, it's great energy here. Right. You know, can we use your space?" And we're like, "Come on, just bring that yeah. checkbook." <laughs> right. <laughs> Matter of fact, bring that. Tara, Miss Madam Money. How do, because here's another thing in Atlanta, a lot of times you want to use somebody's service, like I want to come and film, uh, I got people call me, because when they look in Atlanta, they end up at Dryer Buzz, and then you make those referrals, and then that person doesn't know how to say how much they're worth, mm -hmm. you know, or you're trying to contract with somebody to do something. How do you get to knowing how much you're worth and how much to ask for, and Pricing your product. Well, that seems to be the biggest problem in Atlanta, pricing mm -hmm. your product. That's a million-dollar question, and everybody has different different ways to do that. How I did it was I determined how much I wanted to make within the year. De deciding on how much I wanted to make for a year, then I divided it all the way down to hourly. How much was that going to cost me hourly? Mm. So if I spend this much money doing this, is it going to reach my goal of how much I want to make in a year? But it also tells me how much work I need to put into it as well. So, and then it tells me if I'm going to make this much money talking to this amount of people, if I'm going to get out of 10 people, two people are going to be sales or whatever, that means I'm going to have to talk to 100 people. So it's right. an average, you know, scale. It's just exactly. like marketing. Mm -hmm. I have to invest in marketing so I can get a, a return on investment right. but there's de several different ways but when we come back I want to talk about being a financial um, advisor a financial planner in the bl as, a black, as woman a black woman in a black community there you go there you go and more on the other side of News and Talk 1380 W-A-O-K News and Talk 1380 W-A-O-K call us at 404-892-2703 on News and Talk 1380 W-A-O-K News and Talk 1380 WAOK. Call us at 404 892 2703 on News and Talk 1380 WAOK. 
All right, you're back. Dry your buzz on WAOK. We're talking hashtag broke and in business. Not broke meaning we ain't got no money because remember, uh, we got to talk about the fact that uh, what was the group that just filed bankruptcy? Carol's daughter. A lot of times we hear people they say, didn't file bankruptcy. Say, say, she did a bankruptcy before they did L'Oreal. the merger okay. to L'Oreal. Okay, okay. And a lot of times people think that means that you ain't got no money. That Mm-mm. just means you're trying to protect what you got. Mm-hmm. Exactly. You want to go to Tara, Miss Mad Money yeah. Jackson, to start off this segment. You want to start off with. Well, I want to talk about, when, when you're talking about the financial services industry, one, it's a white male-dominated field, okay. especially when you're talking about financial planners, insurance agents. So it's not that many African-American, especially African-American women mm-hmm. that are in it. And most of us have a passion to go back in our communities, to educate our communities. And when we go to do that, we get heartbroken when our communities don't want to hear it. So mm-hmm. we put on these events, wealth-building events, and if we're not giving away free food or if it's not a concert or if it's not a namer coming out, out there nobody shows but the challenge is and the heartbreaking part is is if I go into Buckhead or if Mm. I go into Midtown if I go someplace where it's predominantly white and I just say financial whatever the place is packed Mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying and every Thursday night at the hotel you you know what Mm -hmm. I'm saying Mm so um one of the one of my money mentors said to me the other day was you can't talk wealth to broke people Mm-hmm. And so, you know, I put that on Facebook and I've got like almost 50 comments. Some mm-hmm. are like, hey, man, you're absolutely right. And it's not about just being broke financially. People have this broke mentality and they've allowed themselves to have a broke mentality because they believe the broke propaganda. They mm-hmm. believe that um, poverty propaganda. The poverty propaganda is you got to have expensive things to look like you're doing something. Mm-hmm. You you know, you can't save everything. You, you got to get it. your, you know, you fake it till you make it. Mm-hmm. This is the land of the $50,000 millionaires in Atlanta, Georgia. Yes. Mm-hmm. Everybody's got to have a nice car. Everybody's got to have nice clothes. Everybody's got to have a cute weave. Everybody's got, and don't get me wrong, I really have a cute weave. I really do. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to put money aside for that. You know what I'm saying? But I, I allocate for it. And I just hope that there are more people, and I don't want to believe it, I hope there's more people that get out of that poverty mindset, that don't believe the poverty propaganda and understand the prosperity opportunities that are out there, that wealth building. And it doesn't take a lot of money. Mm-hmm. It just takes a lot it just takes some effort and just do it you start where you are and that's Mm -hmm. what my passion is to help people start where yeah I can go into white communities and make a whole lot of money Mm -hmm. because they're ready for it but I really want to help our communities communities. because I want the generational wealth right I want us to get out of this poverty mindset but I can't change your mindset you have to change it and that starts with you were saying earlier the abundance budget Mm-hmm. The abundance budget. One, if you're afraid to budget, you're just allowing your money to take over you. Your money will tell you what you can and can't do. Mm-hmm. Your money is telling you that you need to go out and do this or whatever. So if you looked at your savings account right now, what would your savings account say about you? Right. And if you're okay with what it would say about you, cool, go do you. But if you're not, then you have to make some fiscal changes. You have to make some changes. Just like if you're overweight, like I, I need to lose like a good 50 pounds. But if I don't get my butt up and go exercise or change my eating happen. habits, it's not going to happen. Nothing's going to change. Same with finances. Same with being a business owner. Mm-hmm. You say you want to be a business owner, but you don't want to get up. You don't want to go hustle. You don't want to network. You don't. You sit in a room, like you said before, you sit in a whole bunch of room with a whole bunch of people that can probably, possibly help, help you make money, but you sitting there, you scared. And not talking. Right, exactly. and not saying anything. I, I got invited to a networking, and she said, it's at 730 in the morning. And I was like, 7.30 in the morning is two hours away. Okay. That's, that, that's a commitment that I have to make. Let's get into the science of serving oxtails. Because, <laughs> and the reason why I say the and science I'm hungry too. Serving, okay. <laughs> and we're going to have to go try some of these oxtails after the yes. show. Everybody needs to meet us around the corner it's at Stir It Up. up. It's located oxtails. at 84 12th Street. 812 right. Street Northeast. All right, but, now, but being a black business owner, one of the things, especially in Atlanta, <laughs> um, people just didn't seem to understand that time is money, money and that yes. there is a cost associated with everything. Somebody asked me the other day, um, they wanted me to tweet something, and I said, well, that's part of my business model. Right. I'll tweet it for free. 
if you are also free, meaning you're going to fully reimburse each expense. Well, you know what? I think I think at the end of the day, it's, you know, you know, people can complain. And like I said mm-hmm. before, you got to set a standard. This is what we do. I mean, you may like it. You may not. We have foodies that come in there and I have people tell me that they're underpriced. I have people that tell me that they're overpriced. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? But it's like this. You're either going to go to a fast food chain and get a burger and pay the two dollars for a burger or you're going over to one of the boutique burger spots and you're going to pay 12. Right. But you might not be the person that wants to pay 12. That is OK. But go to the two dollar burger place and don't complain you know what i mean right like don't go to the 12 dollar place and then complain and say you want it like the two dollar place because that's okay. not what we're giving okay. you know as business owners we're we're selling us an experience right. it's not just about a plate of oxtails you know it's about that person that cooked that oxtails for you it's about these seats you're sitting in it's about this this gas and this heat you know what i mean it's about mm-hmm. this rent in this mm-hmm. space so we didn't go into business to just serve you know what it costs for us at the market someone is taking the time to cook that i want you to break down the oxtails remember how Mm -hmm. remember how ti uh (laughs) not ti left left eye broke down the business like this is how you're selling me this is how you're selling me (laughs) me and 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 still be broke (laughs) and still be be broke okay Okay. this is how it is you you like she said the oxtails it may cost you know 850 when you go to the store but now you got a chef transported right transported i mean the cooking all the ingredients that go in that you know the the oxtail doesn't cook itself and it doesn't sit and stew in its own gravy i mean you're putting things in there exactly Exactly. You're, you're cooking it with all the fresh tomatoes, herbs, spices, the whole nine, you know. Then you're getting it with rice and peas, plantain, and chop suey. Mm. You know what I mean? So, mm. and now you're sitting down. You're experiencing whatever experience is right. there. You know what I mean? And that's what you're paying for. So and you have a cloth napkin. <laughs> Electricity, <laughs> air conditioning, heat. Yeah. Okay. And, and, the, and the cloth napkin has to go out to be serviced. Yeah, exactly. So oh, there. there's costs that are associated with everything that you do. I mean, anybody who is in the restaurant industry, um, mm-hmm. even if you were to go to a consultant or someone talk, the first thing they're going to tell you is pricing your menu is the biggest deal. It because is. Because so many businesses fail because their things are priced under what their actual overhead is. Right. Mm-hmm. You know, and I understand a lot of people come there. They might not get that. They just want to come and eat. But that's why we're in business. Right. You well, know what I mean? And I'm okay with losing those kind of people. Oh, I really am. Right. But my thing is, don't 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 go to if you're not going to go to a top scale restaurant and complain about their prices. Don't go don't there. Don't come here and, and complain. They, you know, and they, they do. do. And they we do. do that. And they do, and I and I've had that, you know, happen a lot. And I know some of the people who walk through our door, I hear them make complaints. But I'm like, hold on, I know you're not going to Ocean Air, <laughs> right? On. Talking about crab cakes and, and, and complaining about a price because you know they set that standard, and you already know when you walk in the door, it's going to be this, this, this. Mm-hmm. And we're giving you that when you walk in. So come on over to ready. start up, you know, right. be ready. Have this and great food and these great cocktails, right. and bring your wallet. Right, and you know what you're talking ding, about ding, because ding, you cocktails. were just voted best Jamaican restaurant. Fourth, so, fourth time. I'm hungry. Fourth, fourth time, best Jamaican restaurant. And this startup is around the corner from WAOK. So you guys, you definitely go and check it out. And if you work in downtown Atlanta, uh, soon you're going to be able to just hop on this um what is this? The, the Atlanta streetcar. Yes. You can just hop on the subway because they got a great lunch menu and a lunch special. Yes. So we want to we want to fill it. And it's some sisters and her and her wonderful husband and this restaurant. All right, guys, we got to let you let you guys get ready to get out of here. So I want you to tell everybody how they can find you. Everybody's got amazing Instagrams. Let me just say yeah. that. But OK, give her. Let's start over here with Jasmine. Give everybody your information. Yeah. Uh, my Instagram is Jasmatic. It's a uh, wait. What is it? Yes. At <laughs> J.A.Z. M A T I K, come and follow me and I will follow you back. And my website is www.theco-conspirators.com. And uh, we're Stir It Up Atlanta, www.stirituppatl.com. We're located at 84 12th Street Northeast in Atlanta, catering. Pick up, dine in, come and see us. We have a lounge downstairs called the Artist Inn. So come and check it out. Great private space. You guys have got to go over with us when we go to pep up the Falcons. We're going to be over in the yellow lot on November the 30th. Totally. So we, need to, we need to take some uh, sawfish fritters. Yes. I got I to gotta, I gotta learn some more of this Jamaican come on over. Uh, menu. I'm going to learn it tonight. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I know, right? It's just, it's just a walk over. Um, Tara, Miss Madam Monty Jackson, we didn't tell everybody, but you do have a fabulous Twitter chat. So make mm. sure to mention that. I do. I 
have a Twitter chat. It's ranked number in the top five personal finance Twitter chats on Twitter. So I'm Ooh. happy about that. It's hashtag cash chat, C-A-S-H chat, C-H-A-T, every Friday from 12 to 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. My next guest coming up is going to be Sally May. So nice. we're going to be talking Ooh. about some student Everybody loans needs to know from that. the people themselves. But I would love to help you out there with wealth building. Also, I'm a licensed life insurance agent and property and casual agent. So I love protecting wealth as well. And you can find me at www.madammoney.com, M-A-D-A-M-M-O-N-E-Y.com. Find me on all social media. I am active on all social media. So me connect too. me. <laughs> all right. Thank you so much. Let's say thank you to our guests. And thanks, thanks everybody. For us. Uh, thanks amazing. for having us. Yes. Woo-hoo. Great time. You guys, you guys got. I want to do. The, I want to do this again. This was yeah. fun. <laughs> yeah. We're here. Remember now, on the first Sunday of each month, we're doing hashtag broke and in business, and we're telling you what that broke means. Doesn't mean you ain't got no money. It just right. means you're putting all your money in that thing that you love. And you want to protect your money and you want to protect your business and be successful. Mm -hmm. And so make sure that you go out and follow all the ladies. Don't forget the conversation continues after the show. Use the hashtag DryerBuzz on WAOK. If you have a question for the ladies, we'll make sure they get it. And then we'll get an answer and and tweet you back or update you on Instagram and Facebook. All right, when we come back, more News and Talk 1380 WAOK. Call us at 404-892-2703 on News and Talk 1380, WAOK. News and Talk 1380, WAOK. News and Talk 1380, WAOK. Call us at 404-892-2703 on News and Talk 1380, WAOK. All right, it's Dryer Buzz on WALK. I'm your host, Yolanda Lattimore. And, of course, you can tweet me right now at Dryer Buzz, all your comments. We're going to be talking about this. You know, we buzz about the show before, during, and after. So we'll be talking about it because so much great information was shared. But you know what? I, You know I love theater. I I, I get emotional about theater. You know, I snuck off to New York to go to theater to check out the uh, musical. I did that for my birthday. I I had a birthday somewhere in here. I don't even, it came and went so fast. Um, but part of my birthday present to myself was theater. And, you know, theater season is ac- absolutely kicking off here in Atlanta. But there is a theater company in L.A. that's ready to break the mold. And that means they're going to do an experiment to stream theater online in real time. And uh, and this is some some theaters are, are playing around with it. Remember, we got a chance to watch an August Wilson series um, that was put on. But that was ap- just a reading. This is actually going to be full on production. And so we're going to find out. We're going to go to the phones, the Buzzmaker line and find out about the Noor series and it's going to be put on by heretic theater lab and they are in la and we're going to talk with jennifer cotelier she is the artist i'm sorry artistic director of the newly formed heretic theater lab and she's on the phone with us hi jennifer hello how are you Thank you so much. Thank you so much for calling me. Let me tell you, um, I am one of the theater bloggers here in Atlanta. And so I said when I got the show, I've got to be the voice of theater on the air. Now, you guys are going to do something. It's called the Noor Series, right? Am I pronouncing that correct? Yes, Noor Series, yes. Now, tell it's an experiment to to stream theater live. Now, I, I personally think that every theater house should be doing this by now because most of us, especially in my audience, we live online. Everybody's on Facebook all day. Everybody's on Instagram all day. and But yet, you know, trying to experience things outside of where we live and, and live stream. How do you think this experiment is going to go? And is it something that the theater companies are embracing? Well, it is a brand new concept. And I really hope that it's something that they do embrace. Because I think if we can find our audience online that that will help support small theater companies mm-hmm. in a way that uh, that we don't have right now because funding is is drying up and it's a it's a tough economic climate out there for small theaters and I think that by finding our people online mm-hmm. we might be able to stay alive. And, you know, and I, I'll tell you, I think it, it breaks my heart sometimes when I see that there are amazing productions because not a lot of these productions are recorded. So and it. 
I, I just I'm so in love with with stage and theater, and I have my theater crushes. But it breaks <laughs> my heart that there are amazing productions out there that people don't get to see simply because they they are just not used to going to seeing the live theater. That's a big thing I know that we have in Atlanta, trying to convince an audience. You know, just like you would go to the movies, you could go and see live stage. I totally agree. I, I think that it's a, some amazing productions have happened, and you can't, they're gone. And mm-hmm. I think that's part of the beauty of theater, and people who really love theater will argue and say that that's supposed to be the way the art form is. Mm-hmm. But I think that um, actors should be able to share their work, and directors, producers, everyone who has worked so hard to put a play up should be able to share that with exactly. other people beyond just the night of the show. Because when you think about the music industry, I mean, they fought the online audience for a long time, even radio itself fought the online audience for a long time but everybody Mm -hmm. has had to go that way television fought the online audience for a long time um are you do you feel like you guys are are on the cusp um do you right on time with this or do you feel like you're kind of behind time with it you know i think that theater is one of the last groups to get on board Mm -hmm. and because all those other industries have figured it out it took a minute and they did fight and i think that's about to happen with with theater it's really big in the U.K. right now, and um, it was the National Theatre of London, really, that started in 2009 mm. to, to do this and open everybody's eyes. And so now in London, it's a routine thing, but their union structure is different, and that's a little bit of the, the okay. issue here. So that, so, so, a, so the union structure is an issue for you? Is that why we haven't seen our favorite, our favorite uh, local theaters online? It is, but I think that there's a way to work within the union uh, framework. So equity is the actors um, okay. on stage union. Right, right. But we are going to do this production through SAG-AFTRA. Oh. And, yeah, so we're, we're treating it because it lives online. It's as if it's a webisode. And I think that this gotcha. might be a really interesting way to attract some great writers, which we've already done for the Noir series, and interesting actors, and give them a little bit of a way to reach a larger audience. Now, Nora is about a des- is about desperate characters in desperate situations trying to do that one last thing that is going to put them over the top and fix their problems. And inevitably, it doesn't. It's created by <laughs> Los Angeles screenwriters and theater artists. The North series presents four plays inspired by the dark and pulp- pulpy nor of Hollywood's past filmed and streamed with an eye towards Hollywood's future. Now, tell me just a little bit about what I'm going to experience if somebody watching theater in my home. Well, you will be able to either watch it on your uh, handheld devices, your laptop. If you've got an Apple TV, you can just bounce it right off of your TV screen and watch it in your living room. And it's four short pieces. They're all written by different writers and L.A. theater artists, and we've asked them to come up with a different version of noir. What is their interpretation of noir? And there are four really entertaining shows. One of them is written by uh, Stephen McFeely, who is an L.A. screenwriter and has just recently uh, written the Captain America series. Mm. And, um, yeah, so, and uh, Ed Brubaker, who is a well-known graphic novelist, wrote another one of our pieces, and he does, his focus is noir, too, so it's that pulpy noir kind of graphic novel, and it's interesting to see what he's done for the stage. Mm -hmm. And we also have the Burglars of Ham, who are very funny social satirists, and um, and then Nancy Keystone and her critical art performance group, who do really conceptual pieces. So it's a little something for everybody. Uh, We also have two MCs who are going to lead the audience through, so they're going to interact. We have an interactive feature online, so if you tweet us or if you're watching along and you chat, you can have a conversation with us. And um, and we'll do a couple shout outs for the people at home. So you'll and see that that sounds like a, that sounds like a perfect night. Plus, I can eat my heart candy. <laughs> you can unwrap as many heart candies as you want. <laughs> right. Because if people don't understand when you go to the theater, you have to turn off your phone. You got to unwrap your candy and get ready. You got to make sure you don't get the coughs. You know, you know how you, you always have that one person that's like they got they've got the coughs. But. I, and not only that, this is going to make me want to watch because one of the things about theater is if you love it, then you got to go back. But with this, I can I can watch it over and over again because I can watch it from home. I mean, now tell me this. The camera placement is, is am I sitting center stage or what what's on the screen for me when I'm watching the play? We are going to do it with a three camera <gasps> setup. So, right. So I'm we're going to gently. Right? So it's, we're excited about it, too. And I'm really looking forward to the way that it's going to work out. 
this way we get a really great coverage. And it's, we want it to very much feel like theater, though. We don't want it. We're not trying to recreate TV on stage. But we do want to be able to catch all the important moments and kind of direct your eye gently there. But it's, it's going to be covered. They're HD cameras. They're going to be placed right where the action is. So it's, you're going to be right up close and feel like you're in the front row. Oh, my God. See, that that's exciting for me. I hope all of Atlanta theaters are listening to the segment. If not, I'm going to make sure they hear this <laughs> because, uh, I, like I said, I'm usually at the theater probably two, three times a month, if not twice a week, uh, depending on what's playing. We're moving into the holiday series. Now, your dates, let's give everybody the dates uh, I'm looking at. Is that November 7th, 8th, and 9th? And if you're outside of L.A. and you want to watch this online, you can go give them your website and information on how we can be in the audience. Yes. Well, the website is www.heretic.com, and that's spelled H-E-R-E-T-I-C-K, lab, L-A-B, dot com. So hereticlab.com. And you can buy tickets straight through that website. And um, and then just stream it when it comes time. And our Saturday, uh, the 8th and the 9th, the Sunday, mm-hmm. we have uh, shows at 4 o'clock Los Angeles time, so that's going to be on the East Coast closer to evening for you, so I'd recommend those. Gotcha, gotcha. Okay, well, I'm going to make sure I get my ticket, and I'm going to actually be live tweeting about this, too, because I can't wait to see it. I can watch Amazing. I can watch L.A. Theater from Atlanta. I'm too happy. Thank you so much, Heretic Lab. Thank you so much, Jennifer. Thank you, Yolanda. Appreciate it. All right, keep us, keep us with the buzz so that we know what's going on when you have more shows. Absolutely. Thank you so much. Thank you. All right, guys. Another great episode. When we come back, we're going to to wrap up. There's some other things I need to tell you that's going on this week. And uh, I need to get, we're gonna, let's, why don't we bring, we went out, we started with the Falcons. Let's talk a little bit more because that's, that's got to be exciting. Okay. So what, where are we right now? Cause, <laughs> all right, let's go ahead and take a quick break and reset the show. And then we'll get ready to wrap up and uh, tell you more about what's buzzing in Atlanta. What's buzzing today? You're listening to News and Talk 1380 WAOK. News and Talk 1380 WAOK. Call us at 404-892-2703 on News and Talk 1380 WAOK. News and Talk 1380 WAOK. All right, it's Dryer Bus. Dryer, D-R-Y-E-R-B-U-Z-Z dot com. Dryer Buzz on W-A-O-K. My name is Yolanda Latimore. I'm the editor of Dryer Buzz and your host of Dryer Buzz on W-A-O-K. And as I said at the beginning of the show, you should always be at dryerbuzz.com because that's where we uh, have all the links, everything that you've heard on the show, what uh, some of the shows you can go and listen to, some of the archives. All of that is, is linked uh, buzzing video from the week that we even did a we even did a, a calendar for you those of you that were out uh checking out the Halloween events if you click on the living atlanta style tab across the top that's going to give you the events calendar so that way when you see me posting all these pictures on my instagram you don't have to say i wish i'd known about that cuz i tweet um pretty much all day i think i even tweet in my sleep right about now in facebook update and uh I, here's something I want to talk about because a lot of people know me from from social media and, and the workshops that I do on social media. The fact that I've written the book is called 27 Answers to Create Buzz. Um, and I've been involved in social media literally from the conception of the Internet. We're talking to some probably 30 years. And uh, I remember when Facebook came around, I mean, never had I seen people put as much personal information out there uh, until Facebook came and decided it, they were going to be the network to make you come forth with your real name and also, and even, even Facebook kicked me off this week because I have dryer buzz. It, 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 it Mark Coop, Mark uh, hit me up and a few other people hit me up and wanted to know where'd I go? Why wasn't I on Facebook? And I was like, what do you mean? And I went to check it out and they were like, well, you, it does that, you know, I guess whatever algorithms or whatever, they were a random check said it didn't look like a name to us. And I had to swap it around uh, so that I can get back on. And so this is what I tell you why you have to have your own. You have to have your own website. This is one of the reasons why we're developing the app and shout out to everybody that's supporting the app, the the development that we're doing. Um, But you have to, you got to have that 
plan B because they are really controlling. And what I'm concerned about this week, and I've told you guys, uh, and I tell all my clients and, and everybody that's coming on social media, um, we live in public in social media. There, You keep saying you want privacy. You keep saying you don't want all your information out there. Well, that's not possible. If you say, okay, I want to be a part, you're literally, literally giving consent over. And so, you know, you can either be a part or not. If you want all your privacy, you don't want anybody to know all these things, then don't be on it or go get your own or develop your own app, which is like what, what we're doing. Cause I'm ready to bring our audience into an intimate space. You can't keep saying, go to all these different places to get all of this content. What I'm really concerned about, and I'm going to talk about it. We're gonna, there's a number of things we're going to talk about next week with the language of men. Um, you know, because we've done all the, follow up to all the episodes of Ayala. We know that there is such a thing now with daddy issues. And yet again, we had another parent deciding to humiliate their child, which they consider to be a form of parenting. Now humiliating your children on Facebook. Let me tell you, I have raised four kids. Okay. And half the people one don't even know I've got kids because my children are like, look, don't put us out there like that. But I would never do that. One of the things I've done as a parent is not infringe on my children and certainly not humiliate. I might say, you know, they're doing some crazy stuff here, there, and the other, but to see a parent truly humiliate a child on Facebook, you think you're doing it for your friends. You know, my friends and I are going to have some conversation about parenting. Um, you got to be very careful with that because Facebook can already told you, you post a photo, we can do what we want to do with it. We can allow our users to do what they want to do with it. And uh, there was a father, and it was actually a friend of a friend. You know, Facebook does the friend of a friend. And he posted the uh, page of his daughter. He has a daughter who has these beautiful long legs. And somebody, you know, in her circle is you know, misconstruing her age. She's using the opportunity, the fact that she can tell somebody she's 12 or 14, and they believe it, not believe in fact, not knowing the fact that she's actually 10. He decided he went and got these shirts made a shirt made that says hey I'm underage I'm 10 years old and he put all these barrettes in her hair and he posted this picture and of course all his friends had their comment and say hey dad way to go da 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 and I'm like no oh my god because and I sent him a friend request because I wanted to let him know that as a dad you only have but so many moments with your daughter to become her hero and if you humiliate your daughter uh when it when the time of need comes for her she already knows i can't go to him because he's already in i told you so mode he's already in humiliate me mode now what do i do well what i was trying to i was trying to get to him in time because i knew that all of the blogs all of the newspapers who compete with the blogs were going to pick up this story up and it was going to make him look real bad and that the fact that some of them blurred out the picture of his daughter, but many of them ran the picture of his daughter. So that means that from now on, there's no way to delete this. There's no way to take it back from now on. Any engagement that his daughter has online can be tied to this photo and this humiliation. And now he's being humiliated because some of the headlines of the story um, was negative towards him for humiliating the daughter. Some people say, well, it wasn't humiliating. No, he's, he's a good parent. Well, he gave a list of things that his daughter has done. Like one, she been 10, she's started social media pages, which she shouldn't have been able to. But my thing was, how was she able to do all of this stuff? If you are truly the parent that you pretended to be on Facebook and stop sharing it with people on Facebook who are not the best parents of their own kids. So you're asking people to co-sign on this when they're not doing a, a very good job themselves. So we see how much they're on Facebook. We just we just had Halloween. We're trying to see your baby's costume, not yours. <laughs> well, hey, you ain't got no kids. <laughs> I'm just saying. You know, I wanted I wanted Tanisha to post the baby's costume. I didn't want to see Tanisha out there as the cool fairy queen. You know what I'm saying? And then you got you know, don't be like Bethany posing in your baby's pajamas. You know, when you got a custody case and a divorce case going on, I mean, make better decisions as to what you're doing with social. Social media is a good thing. It can be a good thing. It can bridge the gap of a lot of things. But you got to think about what you're doing and what you're putting out there. When this young girl becomes of age and she goes and she wants a Facebook or whatever the social media is at that time, when she posts her picture, 
it's going to do a facial recognition and it's going to recognize her today. Now, she's been humiliated. Parents, stop chastising your children on Facebook because your friends ain't the best parents in the world. They ain't doing no better job than you are. At least you knew, at least he knew his daughter had created a page. Half the folk don't know their children got pages out there and don't know what they're doing on those pages. But uh, we're going to find out about it. All right, guys, it's been another great episode of Dryer Buzz on WALK. Don't go anywhere. Joyce Tell is coming up with love and relationships. So you got to stay tuned for that. Everybody have a good week, and we'll be spreading the buzz at DryerBuzz.com. You're listening to News and Talk 1380 WALK. News and Talk 1380 WALK. WALK.